something that I've found studying Ellington scores is a lot of times you'll think, oh, that's something that's improvised. And it's actually composed right. for a specific guy in the band. Oh, yeah. it has the name of the individual player. But that, in some ways, does that support um, you know, some, some jazz educators and higher academia saying, well, we shouldn't play Duke Ellington's music because he wrote it for specific players and it'll never sound that way again, so we, we must move on to something else. Or well, is there gr merit in you know, still playing this music? The first merit is learning how to play. Thank you. See, now, <laughs> now, see, there is no music that a jazz musician will play that is more demanding than Duke Ellington's. But, as you just said, there are all kinds of excuses that people want to make for why they shouldn't be playing it. Now, the actual problem of playing it is that most musicians, like uh, most people, they don't want to work hard. And, and if you, and if you, and if you want to get the sound of Creole Rhapsody, mm -hmm. You have to go for what those guys were getting, and that means you have to work on that. You break down the when you break down the voicings and all, you say, "Well, well, that was out of hard with us." Also, well, we have to actually play this. Part of the issue with jazz education, it seems like that there's a a faction that is resistant to what you just said, which is the hard work of studying and getting inside. Um, you know, the sound of you know the guys in Ellington's band from different eras. You know? Right. You know, that, that, you know, there's a certain type of ignorance around, you know, we always have to look towards something out there in the future versus understanding what the music actually is. I was talking to a, a, a jazz educator and I was saying that I didn't understand why if somebody was a, was, played the tenor saxophone that they didn't say spend uh, a semester or an entire year on great tenor saxophone players and the final would be executing a solo as close as possible to the way that person sounded. Mm -hmm. So I said, now it doesn't mean that the saxophone player has to go on and play like that, but he will have a achieved a knowledge of the saxophone because if he actually learns how to get to that sound, then that'll be something that he, that he understands. There is such an enormous amount of, of, of knowledge to be had by dealing with Duke Ellington's music. There are so many different things that he understood, like finally to say when he talks about Sonny Greer in his book, Music is My Mistress, he says that he, he liked Sonny Greer because Sonny Greer was a perfect percussion reactor. If you played, mm -hmm. a, played a ping, he knew how to figure out the appropriate pong. Mm -hmm. And so he's saying that, he's saying, you know, that when you hear that, this guy thought about that. Yeah. He didn't just stumble up on it. He tried it and tried it until he got the, the appropriate one. Mm -hmm. See, and you hear that so often with Ellington's music. Duke Ellington was trying to figure out a way to base his whole orchestration on the sound of New Orleans music. See, because he was trying to figure out a way to create a counterpoint that wasn't European. Mm -hmm. And he was, it was right there in New Orleans. King Oliver, Jelly Roll Morton, Duke, uh, uh, Louis Armstrong, they were right on it. When you're talking about a musician that imaginative, he doesn't have to literally copy everything someone does because he understands the conception mm -hmm. of what of what is done. See, that's always the most important thing you can learn in any kind of an art form. Is once you learn what the conception is, then you can go to, go straight to the conception rather than the execution of it. Mm -hmm. See, because w most of what jazz education and most of what what musicians allow themselves to be misled by is the nature of the execution. If you understand your, the conception, you can find your own notes. And that was what Duke Ellington was constantly doing. Mm. And, and that's what people have to do when, when, when they're influenced by him. They have to understand what he did, did if they can, and then see if, if they can understand the conception of it, and then look for their own notes.
We'd like to thank author Stanley Crouch for joining us today. My name is Todd Stoll for the Education Department at Jazz at Lincoln Center. Thank you very much.